In this video I'm going to show you the absolute best Lucerne has to offer. From highlights of the historical old town to scenic walks, top museums and gondola rides to amazing mountaintops. Let me share my 20 years of living in Switzerland so that you can have an unforgettable trip in Lucerne. So let's start off our tour of Lucerne with an absolute highlight, the Chapel Bridge. It's a little bit crazy to think but this bridge actually dates from the 14th century and it crosses the Royce River right through the middle of Lucerne so it's a great place to start your tour of the old town and the centre part of Lucerne. First you cross the bridge and take a look up as you're crossing you'll see these amazing paintings from the 17th century that actually depict the history of Lucerne and unfortunately many of them were damaged in a fire not too long ago and they tried to restore some of them but it wasn't possible so there's some missing but check out the ones you can along the way and you'll be amazed at this covered bridge one of the oldest and longest in Europe. I just head upstream to the Jesuit church which dates from 1677. It's a stunning church on the shores of the Royce River and the outside itself is quite stunning of course but inside it's even more breathtaking. It's full of baroque and rococo stucco. If you look up you'll see the amazing frescoes in the ceilings worth taking a look around and seeing what else you can find in the alcoves on the side. The organ which is in the back so you'll have to turn around as you're heading down towards the altar. There's some amazing concerts that take place inside this church because of the stunning acoustics and it's definitely worth spending some time in the Jesuit church. And continuing further downstream is Lucerne's lesser known covered bridge, the Spreuerbrücke. It also has a series of paintings in the roof. This time the theme is the Dance of the Macabre, which was quite a weird, deaf oriented theme that was quite trendy in the Middle Ages. But it's definitely worth checking out this bridge, which also brings you back across the Royce River, just in time to hit the Musseg Wall and the rest of the old town. From this point in our little tour of the old town of Lucerne you can decide whether you go up towards the Musseg wall or continue into the old town and go to the Musseg wall a little bit later. You can access that from various points but let's take a look at the Musseg wall first. The Musseg wall was actually part of Lucerne's original fortifications back in medieval times and it has nine towers along the way each with a different name and purpose. You can walk right along this wall if you climb up one of the towers or you can head to the most interesting and exciting tower in the middle which is called the Zeit or Time Tower and it actually has a clock which can be seen from the river and you can go inside this clock and if you get there on the hour you can actually watch the inner workings and get deafened by the sounds of the bells so be careful just as it hits the hour put your fingers in your ear but it's a really cool place to check out. During winter it's all closed and I've been there in winter disappointingly a number of times so then you can't walk along the top of the wall or get inside the tower but you can actually take a tour around the back and get a view of the whole wall and all of the towers which is also worth doing. Now heading into the heart of Old Town Lucerne, we have some stunning squares and painted buildings. You absolutely have to spend some time here. Let's start with Herschenplatz, which is named after an old hotel which used to be here. There's a beautiful fountain in the middle called the Little Goose Man Fountain. That's worth having a look at. And you can continue on to the Weinmarkt, which is another amazing square with painted buildings. And there were a lot of guild halls here and originally a covered market selling a whole bunch of wares and meats and all sorts of things which is of course no longer here. And then you can continue even further on to the corn mark, which is where the town hall is and the beautiful tower of the town hall with an amazing clock in the top which is a later addition to the tower like in many towns in Switzerland. Originally it was a prison tower and then later transformed into a clock tower. The buildings here are definitely worth spending time taking some photos of. There's some amazing paintings and you can head down the stairs back towards the river from here. And the last little square worth checking out just as you're heading back towards your starting point at the Chapel Bridge is the St Peter's Chapel and the St Peter's Chapel Square. And from here you actually enter into the shopping areas of Lucerne if you want to go and buy some watches or some chocolate or something like that and leave that till the end of your tour. And now heading a little bit outside of the old town is the stunning Renaissance church of St. Leo de Gar. It's actually taken me 15 minutes to learn how to pronounce that name, St. Leo de Gar. The church itself is not quite as beautiful inside as the Jesuit church, 
but they have a really crazy organ and a rain machine they use in there which if you're lucky enough to get to hear is quite unique they use it in some concerts to simulate thunder lightning and rain and it's been around for quite a long time so head inside there if you're quite interested in churches because it's on the way to the glacier garden and the lion monument and it's worth taking a walk there and even heading along the lake which we'll talk about in just a minute and hanging a left from the church you can head up towards the lion monument it's about five minutes walk the lion monument is dedicated to the swiss guard that were protecting the french king during the 1792 revolution and they were actually all killed except for of course the ones who were not there and one of the surviving members who lived in lucerne decided to raise a whole bunch of money and create this stunning monument to all of the swiss guard that were killed during the revolution and there's a plaque on the left hand side you can take a look at and read the full story it's a really peaceful area with a lake and a lovely garden and it's worth spending a few minutes reflecting on the monument and right next door lucky for us is the glacier garden which is quite a quirky museum it's actually the collection of about five museums from memory you have an old museum with a wonderful collection of maps and other memorabilia from the family who founded the museum but the main piece the piece you see as you just walk in are some glacier pots which are created by the swirling water that melts off the glaciers and the founder discovered those in his back garden and created the museum over a century ago i believe and that was the foundation of the museum but then it expanded he also had his house which was sold and created as part of the museum and that's definitely worth taking a look inside there's some really stunning pieces inside there there's also a really cool maze and there's a new piece there which dives deep into the geology inside of a big concrete uh, bunker style building which you'll see there and then there's a lovely viewpoint right up the top with a tower you should take a look at it's one of the best views in Lucerne so all in all the Glacier Garden is a eclectic mix of different museums and fun things to visit on your day in Lucerne and if you're up for a walk or a bit of a sunset stroll, one of my favorite places to go in Lucerne is along the lake. There's a really long panoramic stroll which starts basically from the bridge heading down the lake and sunset is one of the best times as you can see from these pictures. There's a swimming pool there if you're there on a hot summer's day and you can grab an ice cream on the corner just before you start your walk or just relax on one of the benches and enjoy the stunning view of Mount Pilatus right in front of you. And of course there's even more museums in Lucerne if you're a museum lover. There's the famous Transport Museum which is absolutely huge and has massive displays of trains, boats, cars, planes, helicopters, space ships and all sorts of other things. It's an amazing museum. I've been there with my godson a number of times and you could spend days in this museum. It's absolutely insane. You should definitely visit that. There's also the Rosengarten Art Museum just behind the Jesuit Church and there's the Wagner Museum which is actually a house where Richard Wagner spent some time composing on the shores of Lake Lucerne it's an absolutely stunning location and worth a short walk out of Lucerne if you want to follow the lake in the other direction from the promenade and last but certainly not least are the mountain day trips you can do from Lucerne there's a whole range of mountain day trips my favorite is the Pilatus Golden Round Trip which starts with a boat ride from the docks outside of the train station, takes you to Alpenachstadt, where you catch one of the steepest funiculars in the world to the top. And then you can spend a few hours on the top exploring, doing a small hike, having something to eat, relaxing on the terrace if it's sunny, of course, and then catch the gondolas back down to Crianz and then a short bus ride back to Lucerne. As a day trip, it encompasses everything Lucerne has to offer, lakes, views, gondola rides, funicular rides and everything. It's amazing. My second favorite one would be to Bergenstock, which is across from the lake. It's a little peninsula, which is also a small mountain. On the top there, you can go up to the stunning new hotels, which are there and do a short walk to the glass elevator called the Hammerschwand elevator, which is really cool. You can look out of the elevator as you rise up to the vertical drop into the lake and see Mount Riggi in front of you. You can have a bite to eat and hike back down the other way or do the trip in reverse back to the funicular down to the boat ride to Bergenstock. And you can also go to Mount Riggi and catch the boat out to Vitznau is one of my favorites and catch the funicular up there. That's another really top thing to do in Lucerne. And there's a whole bunch of other ones as well. You can go to Stores, 
and Fronopstock. There's so much to do in Lucerne. You're absolutely spoiled for choice. And if you want to get the full guide with all the details, you can click the link down below. We've compiled a guide with all of these tips and tricks and locations, maps, hikes, favorite things to see, favorite places to eat. And it's an amazing way to make the best of your trip in Lucerne.